Hi everyone, it's uh, Tim Oscar here from Steinbeck Games uh, with a very quick tutorial to demonstrate a very simple and effective technique for doing animated uh, features on cartoon models such as this unicorn here uh, using texture swaps. Uh, so the reason we want to use this technique is because if I was to um, have uh, the full texture of this unicorn swapping between frames, when I zoom really close into the model, you'd see that the eye area would be very blurry, so you can actually see the nose here is quite low res because that's part of the main texture, but the eye here is very crisp and high resolution. Now there's no way we'd be able to achieve that by mapping uh, the area of the eye onto the main texture space for the rest of the unicorn. Um, so I'll show you how we separate out a, sl a slightly separate uh, piece of mesh uh, for the eye, just the eye itself, uh, in Blender, which we can then assign a separate material and texture to. So in Blender, you can see that uh, this is the, the basic mesh of the unicorn. And you can see I pre-UV mapped it um, over on this side here. And uh, the area where the eye is is actually just about here. And if I zoom right in on the, uh, the UV space, it's actually only these small, uh, this small patch of uh, faces right in the corner of this uh, texture. And when we uh, paint the texture over this for the various colors, uh, that area is not going to take up a lot of space, so we don't have very many pixels to play with. So what we really want to do is take a duplicate of this area, expand it up to a f the full UV space to cover an entire uh, square of UV space, and map the high resolution texture for the eye onto that area. So very basically what that means is, um, let's take the, the unicorn um, on its side there. I'm going to go into um, wireframe mode and deselect everything. And then with the circle select, I'm just going to select um, these faces here, which is roughly where the eye is going to be. So the reason I've gone into wireframe mode is so that I've got both sides of the unicorn there. So let's take it out of wireframe mode so you can see it better. So I'm then going to duplicate that with Shift D. Now you can see I've got the those uh, separated faces. And what we need to do is just slightly expand them on the x-axis so they, they're hovering just above the rest of the faces there. So if I do S for scale, X, and I'm going to scale it by 1%, so 1.01, .01, and you, just, you can see it's just popped out a little bit, very slightly, so uh, there's a tiny gap between the main body of the unicorn and these uh, faces that I've separated out for the eyes. Now you can see what I was talking about earlier with um, the UV space here. It's uh, really crammed down into this tiny, tiny area, and so that wouldn't really give us very good high-resolution eyes. So now what I'm going to do very quickly, I'm just going to flip back to the default view. I'm going to separate this, these, mesh, uh, these faces into a separate mesh. Um, so I can do that with P, separate by selection. Now if I um, deselect with tab, and you can see now that that's a whole separate model there. And we can rename this um, whatever we like, so I'll call this unicorn eye model, for example. Doesn't really matter. And that's all we need to do there. Um, and we can save that down and then import it into Unity and away we go. So now what we can do, I'll just stop this uh, from play mode and demonstrate what this looks like in scene in the scene view. Now you can see this is what we've got uh, in Unity and I've selected just the unicorn eye mesh here and you can see it's highlighting just those those faces that we'd separated out earlier and you can see what we've got on top of that is the um, the eye texture. Um, and in fact, I have forgotten to do one small step. I'm going to go straight back into, unit, into Blender and select these uh, faces again. And you can see what I really want to do here is just rotate this in the UV space and scale it right up. And then move it roughly into space there. There we go. And then save that down. And then, of course, now we've got our eye um, texture covering the entire UV space. So I forgot to mention that earlier. Um, but now what you can see is uh, we've got this high resolution texture, which I will show you um, in my textures. So we have the UV map for the main body of the unicorn and the UV map for just the eye area. And then I can show you the, this is the texture for uh, the main body of the unicorn. You can see the nostrils and all the various bits of hair, and the horn are these three stripes here, if I just flip between the UV map 
and the texture, you can see where those, um, what I've done there, I've just basically gone into um, the uh, image editing package of, uh, of my choice and mapped over those uh, areas of the UV map with the relevant colors. But for the, the eye UV, you can see that takes up a much larger area in the UV space. I've just got the high resolution eye texture uh, for the, um, the open eye open, and I've also got the, the equivalent closed texture here. So it doesn't really matter that I've got these, um, one of these has got a, a transparent background and the other one hasn't. Um, sorry, this is this, this one here. Uh, the, in the actual uh, texture, this is actually transparent. I just haven't uh, selected the alpha's transparency checkbox here, whereas I did for the, the open one. As it turns out, that doesn't really matter um, because what we've done is I've mapped the um, texture onto a particular material, which I've called Unicorn uh, One Eyes material. Now, this is just one of the standard Unity um, materials. The only difference is I've set the rendering mode to fade, which means that anything that's a transparent in the texture um, will be transparent on the material now. And you can see I've also got uh, the main body of the, the unicorn is, um, uh, where is he now? This one here, the unicorn one material, which is just the, the main body. And you can see that is just a standard opaque uh, Unity standard material. Uh, and that covers the rest of the body. Okay, so the trick to getting the blinking happening is that I can um, use the same material, so this one with the high resolution eye texture on it, and all I need to do is switch between the, uh, the for the main texture and the albedo slot here, switch between the um, eyes open and the eyes closed. So you can see if I just switch that over there, if it changes the texture on the on the mo on this part of the model to the the closed one, and I can switch it back to the open one. Now this is very easy to manage in script. In fact, uh, so in a script, all you do is you take your material. So this is um, what I call when I want to switch the uh, the different texture um, components. So I take the the material, I look for the main the main texture on that material, and I just switch it for whichever um, texture I want. So in this particular example, um, if I show you the, uh, the the material swapper, um, I have here we go. I've set it up so that I've got the um, the eyes open texture and the eyes closed texture as two separate uh, slots, which I can then just flip between by changing the index on the um, on this. Uh, I called it shaded frames here. So I just switch between frame ID zero and frame ID one, and by um, I've set set up a, a hot key, which is just the B key, and so that when I hit that, it just uh, swaps the texture from one to the other, and that's all that does. So when I'm in, um, in Unity and I hit the B key, um, at right at the beginning of the video, you saw it just flipping between um, eyes closed and eyes open. And it's as simple as that. So all you really need to do, take a small section that you want to, be, on, want to animate, separate it out in Blender or whatever modeling package you've got, make that a separate um, model, assign a different material to it, and then just change the uh, texture that's assigned to that material um, however you choose. And you can have any number of animated um, uh, textures then swap between them uh, as many times as you like uh, in whatever order you like. So that's it. Very simple technique. I hope you find that useful and uh, I'll have another tutorial as and when I can be bothered to make one. Thanks for watching.